Hi, welcome to today's webinar. Thank you for joining us. I'm Helen Schwartz Grossman, Marketing Manager at Waldox. Before we get started with the webinar, I just want to go over a few housekeeping items. Today's webinar will be recorded and the link will be emailed to you afterwards. Everyone is muted right now. If you have any questions, go ahead and type them into the GoToWebinar questions pane and we'll address the questions at the end of the webinar. Today's webinar is part of our new legal technology webinar series where we'll introduce some of our partners. So join us on Fridays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Today we would like you to meet in MLX. Our speaker today is Florian Orangeu, Director of Digital Information Systems. Florian has more than 20 years experience in information management, business process reengineering, change management, business information, systems planning and design, and project management. Florin founded Digitus Information Systems in 1999, and it has become a dynamic and innovative Australian software company. Digitus is the developer of Inmail X, a leading email management compliance and productivity suite for Microsoft Outlook and multiple document management systems. InmailX introduces a modular architecture with optional connectors for integration with document management systems and multiple cloud repositories. Throughout his business career, Florin has been committed to developing simple, user-friendly compliance and productivity tools that incorporate user-centric innovation, flexibility, and reliability. Today, Florin will show you how InmailX empowers WellDocs users to easily and quickly file emails and attachments into single or multiple matter workspaces through a simple interface and intuitive workflows. You'll discover a variety of simple and user-friendly email X tools that enable firms using WellDocs to become more productive and compliant. Thank you in advance for the attention you'll be giving this webinar today. And uh, Florin, I'm handing it over to you now. Great, thank you very much, Helle. And hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, and uh, I'm hoping that uh, you're all keeping safe and well through these uh, interesting times. And um, I just want to say hello from Australia. Uh, today, I'm going to walk you through a uh, brief presentation of uh, EmailX functionality. And then at the end, I'm just going to show you a demonstration of how users can use EmailX to work with WorldDocs and provide them with a more intuitive and streamlined experience. EmailX, uh, as Helen mentioned, is an email management compliance and productivity solution for Microsoft and WorldDocs which would enable users to file emails into WorldDocs, save attachments into single or multiple workspaces, uh, clean metadata from email attachments on the fly, convert them to PDF, uh, change the names of attachments and change the order before they are sent out. Uh, it has a SendGuard module that en enables users to um, confirm and uh, all the recipients before emails are sent out. Uh, it can be used to standardize email communication by um, uh, creating email templates and also to reduce paper wastage when uh, printing emails and attachments by enabling users to choose how many conversation threads from emails they want to print. At the same time, um, with EmailX can be used to help users manage their time by uh, enabling them to easily uh, schedule follow-up appointments or tasks when they send emails out. EmailX provides a modular architecture that consists of this uh, six core module. So it has an email manager module. And as the name suggests, this is the module that enables users to uh, file emails. Uh, the attachment manager module enables users to uh, process attachments on the fly, so it provides them with the ability to change the names, the order, to remove metadata, to convert them to PDF, to compress them into a zip file, and so on. A pre-manager module, as the name suggests, is about 
actually helping users print exactly what they need from an email. So the idea behind Print Manager was to reduce paper wastage and actually help users print uh, uh, what's relevant from an email message or just print relevant attachments from one interface. Uh, the Content Manager, it's a module that we developed to help organizations create email templates and publish them from a central location. Uh, it supports uh, the option to, um, to have personal email templates and also global email templates. And the idea behind Content Manager was to help organizations standardize email communication across multiple users. Uh, the Time Manager module is a module that we developed to um, help users originally file emails and also better manage their time. And Time Manager integrates email management with scheduling uh, functionality that exists in, uh, in Outlook. And lastly, the Brand Manager module, we developed this module to enable firms standardize their branding. So emails can be used to also standardize the signature block in Outlook and manage that from a central location. The email management uh, functionality of EmailX, uh, as far as Waldox is concerned, so it has the ability to um, enable an auto-filing functionality using what's called in the industry as a luggage tag. Uh, it has a quick file functionality to enable users to quickly file emails into the existing uh, favorite or uh, recent workspaces. Uh, users can actually send and file emails directly into a single or multiple uh, workspaces in uh, Waldocs. And as I mentioned before, it has the ability to standardize the descriptions in Waldocs by applying description masks. So organizations can, can predefine the structure of the email description or documents description that are saved in Waldocs um, that would apply to everybody. Uh, also, quite often when users file emails with attachments, they have the ability to uh, combine the filing of an email with saving of attachments into, from, into one process and also behind the scenes relay them in Waldocs. Uh, as people actually file emails, we find that quite often um, the common uh, practices for users to copy emails so, and over time the mailbox users mailboxes they tend to grow uh, and emails are duplicated in users mailboxes as well as in wall docs so email X has the ability to enable users to easily purge all their filed emails um, from within the outlook and uh, choose to to clean up whatever actually they have as duplicates in their mailbox in addition, it provides the recipients and attachments checking to prevent data breaches. So as I mentioned before, with emailx users can check and confirm that they are sending the emails to correct people. The attachment manager module, uh, it was designed to enhance regulatory compliance and mitigate risk. It has functionality like metadata cleaning and converting attachments to PDF on the fly. Uh, it can be used to protect sensitive attachments with passwords uh, from one single interface. So with EmailX, uh, if there is a requirement to password protect attachments before they are sent out, users can password protect Word, Excel, PowerPoint, PDFs, and zip files from one interface inside the email message. Uh, renaming and reordering attachments, this is a simple functionality, but I would say it's the most popular among our end users. and um, it makes it very easy for users to just change the name of attachments without having to do a conversion to PDF or to uh, combine them into a zip file. So they can do it very easily from, um, from within Outlook itself. Uh, now, while the functionality is uh, very user-friendly and easy for users to, to go through, obviously, um, as a result, sometimes people make mistakes. So Emelix has a very handy undo and redo attachments actions so that basically uh, if the user, for example, they would clean metadata from some attachments and they, they realize they uh, mistakenly removed something they didn't want to, they don't need to delete the attachments and reattach them again. They can just simply revert the last action in Emelix and start again from uh, the previous step.
Uh, it has the option when emails are sent externally to prompt users to clean external uh, attachments on send and or to convert them to PDF. And also it has functionality to prevent users from uh, sending WDL links uh, to external recipients, which normally it's recommended that internal communication for organizations using Waldocs to uh, when people work on same documents to actually share them by sending links, uh, WDL links internally, but you want to actually prevent users from sending those links externally. Um, now the other thing is, With email Excel, it has the functionality to, to print uh, emails from one interface or attachments. So with email X print manager, users can selectively print cover page and also um, a certain number of conversation threads from an email. Um, and as emails are printed, again, to prevent users from reprinting the same emails, Emails, emails can be configured to automatically add a printed category. Uh, also from one interface, if there are attachments, word attachments that have track changes, users can choose to print those track changes from within uh, Outlook itself instead of having to open individual attachments, word documents and print them. Uh, as far as the content manager functionality is concerned, as I mentioned, emailx enables firms to create templates and publish them to their users. Uh, users can easily create their own content on the fly and um, uh, in the content items, users can pre-populate the two NCC fields, the subject fields. They can pre-assign attachments to emails so that actually whenever there are some standard emails that require certain documents to be attached, uh, that can be done from a central location. So users don't need to, uh, to know which documents to send and have to selectively search for each document and attach it individually. The time manager, which is the, the scheduling functionality that so enables users to easily schedule follow-up appointments or tasks when sending or filing emails. And uh, the idea behind this was to encourage users to, to file and move their emails into uh, the Docs document management system, we wanted them to have the ability to put reminders so that in case they need to um, have additional actions perform on a specific email conversation, they can actually have those reminders in their calendar and potentially move their emails from the inbox into, into Waldocs. The brand manager, the idea was to actually encourage um, standardization across um, all the, uh, the users in a firm by actually managing the email signature block from a central location and the brand manager integrates the Outlook signatures with Active Directory or with the global address list and it enables uh, user information to be automatically populated from, um, from the global address list and updated from a central location. The idea said be, behind EmailX was to actually enable firms achieve immediate benefits and we try to deliver that by providing a very simple and intuitive integration between Outlook and Worldox. Uh, develop very simple tools that require very little user training and also reduces the running costs and also improve user compliance and productivity by um, streamlining the processes and prompting users to follow specific steps that are required by the organization. And ultimately, this delivers happier users and we constantly get feedback from our customers that um, the users, they love EmailX, uh, they now can do things a lot faster and more streamlined than before with a lot less knowledge and uh, with simple, uh, simpler steps. Now I'm just going to um, show you a bit of a, a demonstration in relation to how users would interact with EmailX. So here I have my uh, Microsoft Outlook interface. I have Waldocs GX4 running. And 
I have access to my uh, my inbox and you'll notice here when Emalex is installed, users would actually have a couple of new icon groups on their ribbons. Um, so they have the forms which are part of Brand Manager. I have this filing which is part of the email manager and navigate is part of email manager. And again, if I compose an email, I have some email specific um, buttons and groups here on the ribbon. So first of all, if I start by attaching uh, some documents from Waldoc, so I'll just go and so if I select a couple of different documents from here and I'll just select different document types, Uh, once I have them selected, as you know, Worldocs provides users with the ability to attach full copies of those selected files or select and attach them as a Worldocs link, a WDL file. So if I start by selecting the WDL file. So I have the WDL file attached to this email. And now let's assume that as a user, I realize that I want to send this to external recipients instead of internal recipients. And instead of attaching WDL file, I would need the copies of those documents. With EmailX, I don't need to delete this WDL file and then reattach. What I can simply do, select replace from here, and I select to replace the links I have attached with copies and just simply select OK. And you notice this, copies of the documents are now attached to the email. Um, as now I have copies of uh, documents attached, I have the option, you notice I have these buttons here, which they are now active. So I have the option to simply change the name of those attachments. And renaming doesn't necessarily mean always changing the name of the, the attachments. This is only used as needed uh, based upon the type of communication and how I want the recipient to see those uh, documents. Also, it's quite handy if um, there are some typos in the file names and I need to rectify them. I can very easily do it from within this interface. So now simply to rename, I can just go and make changes. So if I need to remove, for example, document numbers, I can just remove them from the file names in this interface. A couple of options as a user I have here. So um, we try to, um, to try and make it as simple for people and as uh, streamline as possible. So when in order to rename attachments, users have the option to just simply do a double click to change to an edit mode, but also um, they can use the keyboard. So I can just simply scroll up and down, press enter to edit, make the required change, press enter to save. So very easily I can navigate through my list just using the keyboard and make the required changes. As attachments are renamed, the users would see with this symbol, which ones they rename. In case I made a mistake, I can from here simply right click and revert the rename. If I'm not sure what document that is, I can actually open it from here before I, um, I change the name. Also from within this interface, if I want to, uh, to change the order in which they appear, I can just simply drag and drop or select and move them up and down. So we try to provide multiple ways for people to do, uh, to perform these actions as we realize that different users work very differently. So uh, some users do like to just simply use the keyboard, others just like to, they like to use the mouse when processing uh, or going through these steps. Uh, if I would like to clean metadata, so as an example here, if I open this document, I have some track changes, I have some comments. If I need to sit, remove metadata from, from these attachments, I can simply click on the clean button in here, it will actually show which attachments I have, so I can selectively choose which ones I want to clean. Uh, from this interface, you can clean Word, Excel, PowerPoint, PDF, um, and uh, pictures. Uh, and as I select different attachments, I can make changes to uh, in relation to what metadata I would like to clean. And basically, once I make those changes, I can simply select OK, and these attachments will be cleaned inside the email message. The very first time it does a cleaning, it, it uh, loads the cleaning library. So um, it does take a bit longer than, um, than normal, but once the libraries are, are loaded, the cleaning actually is done in a matter of seconds. So now I have the attachments, which are the clean attachments, so I can reopen the same document in this instance. 
And you notice basically this has the metadata removed. And if I click on file um, info here, it says that basically everything has been removed and created today. Now, if I made a mistake and I realized that in this instance, for example, I didn't want to, to clean the track changes, it's not a drama because very easily with MLS I can undo, select clean again, and I can select to keep the track changes and comments and press OK. So you notice now the same document, if I reopen it, I would have the track changes and comments preserved, yet all the other metadata has been removed. So it's very, very easy from an end user point of view. Um, it doesn't require much knowledge. Um, the buttons are obvious and more or less you, they are just a click away. Now, if I, as a user, instead of sending these multiple attachments, if I like to send them as a PDF, again, very easily I can click on the PDF button from here, I can select to put them into a bundle, them into a single PDF on the fly, and then I can just simply choose the order I want to actually, the doc, I want the documents to appear in the PDF and type a name. So in case the users forget to type a name in here before converting them to PDF, it's not a drum because they use the rename after the process. A couple of options here. I can select to create a PDF or a PDF A, and this can be set as a default. You can select to show track changes. So if I have attachments that have track changes, Word documents, I can select to show them in the PDF and then just simply press OK. So again, the user experience is identical to the cleaning or renaming. So what we try to do is maintain consistent interfaces so that once the users are familiar with the interface, what differs between one action and the other is really uh, just the output of that particular action. But you notice here, just with a couple of clicks, I created this new PDF. So now just to show it. So these are basically now the different uh, attachments which I um, included in this PDF. And remember, I selected to show the track changes and comments in the PDF for the word attachment. So you see in this instance, I have them displayed. Now, once I'm ready to send this email, so one functionality that we have with EmailX is what we call it force filing on send. So we, um, in normal circumstances, users may have different actions to do a normal send and do a send and file. But what we found is that with that kind of separa separation, uh, quite often users, they just simply send the emails because instinctively they always just click the button which they are familiar with. So with EmailX, when they click send, you can actually capture the send button to become a send and file. So this is the EmailX filing window. Now, as a user, um, I will have a list of filing favorites, so I can build a list of favorite matters from all docs that I regularly file my emails into, so I don't need to go and search for them. As I file emails into various matters, automatically those workspaces are added to my filing recently, so I can reuse an existing uh, matter to file a new email into. Uh, if I don't have a matter already listed here, I can just simply select and do a search from from this interface. So, and in here now, it just simply goes and searches Waldocs and it just uh, shows me all the workspaces where I can file that email. And I can just simply select the workspace and, uh, and do a send and file. Or if I work with some of those workspaces, I want to regularly use them, I can just add them to my filing favorites. So you notice in here, I have these two filing favorite uh, workspaces where I can uh, just file my emails into. and then. Once you're ready, you can select it and do a send and file. So that email now and send and file into Waldocs. Um, so very easily, as people send emails on a regular basis, each time they click send, they have this send and file. And you notice now again, I have my favorite workspaces here listed in my, my recent workspace. So I can again just select and do a send and file. A couple of options in this window because the idea was to actually build value around filing. So um, users quite often they complain that when they have to file emails, and the reason is that that tends to be a sort of an additional step that they want they need to go through. So the idea was to actually start building value um, 
around this step. And the way we try to achieve that, so first of all, you notice there are a couple of additional options that I, as a user I can trigger at the time of filing. So first of all, if I need to put a reminder in my calendar to follow up on it, I can easily select to schedule a, an appointment. If I need to print the email, I can select to print it from here. So automatically I can actually combine these two additional steps as part of the filing process, which overall it saves users uh, time instead of actually requiring them to do this type of actions after the email has been filed. So again, I can select send and file. This is the print manager window where I can choose which printer I want to send it to. Um, and I can select, you notice in here I have an option to print the message body and I can choose how many conversation threads from the email I want to print. In this instance, I don't have any attachments, but if I had attachments, I can choose which attachments I would like to print from here and basically just simply press OK. So what happens now basically, uh, you notice it's actually printed the email. So email X it sent that email, I just printed it to a PDF printer, so it asked me to save it in this instance, so I'll just cancel it. And also what you notice is also automatically created an appointment from that email. And as a policy, at the moment I configure it to, automatic, to attach a copy of the email, but you can control whether an email should be attached or not. To include the header of the email, it shows the user where the email was filed, and also this is the body of the email. So basically, if I need to follow up on this, so I'm just going to block sometime next Friday and I'm just going to block an hour and save and close. And you notice basically I've done all that and uh, I'm back to the inboxes, which is where I started from. So the idea was to also help users maintain focus in relation to what, what they are working on instead of actually being concerned about the steps that they have to go through. Now, you will notice in here when I, I send those emails to myself and you will notice that basically, first of all, with emailx, when users file emails, they have this checkbox. So users can, can identify which emails they have filed in the inbox. Also, you can configure emailx to add a category. So first of all, in here, it will actually show that this email is filed into Waldoc. So I can very easily uh, navigate and I can see uh, which ones are filed, or if I just look at the list, I can easily identify them or sort them by the file category or uh, by the checkbox. Uh, one option is when you actually have an email that is filed into Waldos, quite often sometimes you may want to go and modify the metadata for that email or the document profile or the email profile. With emailx, when something is filed, first of all, if I right click and if I click on this where file, you notice I actually have an option to navigate straight to that email in Waldocs. So very quickly, I can navigate to the email from within Outlook. And you notice basically the naming convention for the description. So you notice that's the subject. That's the luggage tag for Waldocs that emailx has added. But also you notice in here, it also added the word email, the date, the time, the number of attachments and the from name. So this is all done automatically uh, following the mask, which I predefine uh, for my user. So again, if you want to standardize what the description should be with other users having to do anything, you can use emailx to easily do so. Now, if I'm back in Outlook and I need to change some of the method, I can also from the same interface, go to where file select properties, and this will actually allow me to open the properties from that workspace. And I can, in this instance, I can change the document type or I can change the author, the type. So I can quickly make a change. So if I select that's a brief, press OK. And then that metadata has been updated in Waldocs. And again, I'm actually back to where I, um, where I started from. In this instance, this email also has attachment. If I need to actually save the attachments as a separate, document in Waldo. So what I need to do just simply, again, I can select on that email, I can sort of choose save attachments. So one thing that also emailx does, it gives me an option to um, automatically suggest the same workspace as the workspace of the email that um, the user filed it into. But I can actually go and choose to put it into a different workspace, or I can select the same workspace uh, and again, press save. Now, Quite often when users have attachments that don't have relevant names, I can actually um, make a change and this becomes then part of the description. So I can choose up here, contract.
uh, quality contract documents to review and just simply save. So again, very, very easily. Now this is saved. You can configure Emacs when users, when attachments are saved to provide a confirmation window that they've been saved. So you notice in here, it shows the document number from Waldocs and also where I saved it. If I need to navigate and see, I can just simply double click on this and this will take me to that Waldocs workspace. And you notice in here, basically that's the description. So that's what I actually changed, but also it applied a mask to say that this document came from an email that had one attachment from that person. So it, it makes it very, very easy uh, to, to apply naming convention, conver conventions and standardize basically how documents are named or emails are named in Waldocs. Again, similarly to the email itself, uh, if you want to change the metadata in here for the attachments I have where saved, I can select it and I can just simply open the metadata to make a change. So if I want to change this document type, say, okay, that's the brief, press OK or put some comments. And now that has been updated to Waldocs and I didn't need to actually navigate to Waldocs to make that change. I can do it straight from within Outlook. Now you would notice here that basically when people send emails, you notice this luggage tag was added by EmailX and this can be configured, customized for the firm so that basically it will actually have the structure of the luggage tag. This is the firm ID, that's the, the container and the client and the matter information which is automatically added to the subject. Now the value of the luggage tag is that when users would send an email, so the luggage tag is added based upon you know the information of the the workspace itself. So you notice in here this is email three at the moment it doesn't have a luggage tag in the subject. The moment I select this and I do a send and file, the luggage tag is added. Now, when you receive an email that has a luggage tag, Emails can automatically file that email into the same matter. So the idea of this is that when users send emails to multiple um, to their clients and they receive responses back, emails can automatically file those email responses into the, the into Waldocs into the same workspace in Waldocs without the users having to manually go and file them. Uh, the other option is that if an email has a luggage tag that hasn't yet been auto filed. When you actually choose to file an email, EmailX will automatically suggest the same workspace. So, but in this instance, I'm just going to leave it there and you'll notice that basically um, once that email is going to be processed, you'll notice that this email is going to be marked as being, um, as being filed. Um, and it's more or less very, very easy. And um, so you notice here, this has been filed. Now, if I see a filed email and I want to navigate to that, document in Waldocs, again, I can right click on this, choose where filed and click on this. And now this is the filed email, email tree, which I filed. It. So again, it makes it very, very easy. Uh, now, quite often when users send or receive emails, then sometimes they need to actually keep an email into multiple workspaces in Waldocs. With email, this again, this is a very simple process. So we call that functionality uh, file to multiple, just call this FPM email. So when you do a send, if you need to file it into multiple workspaces, you can just simply select file to multiple here. And now I can just simply go and add workspaces to my list, which we call this a filing group, where I want that email to be stored. And again, once I've done that, if I regularly file an email into those works or emails into those workspaces, I can again from here right click and select, I want to add this filing group to my filing favorites. So I have it in my filing favorites. You can rename it, you can give some relevant name that makes sense to you. And then I just select send and file. So again, that email now is sent and is filed into those three workspaces. So the, the user experience, if I, the users would need to file into a single workspace or into multiple workspaces is identical. Uh, if I receive an email and I want to file that into multiple workspaces, again, I can just select file. And again, in the filing window, it will also suggest the, the workspaces. I can select the filing group and 
select file to multiple and again select file again and that email is going to be filed into those three workspaces the same way as when I send them file. Now in this instance because I send that email to myself obviously it's going to actually um, identify that there is already a duplicate email in that location so basically in this instance is not going to actually file another duplicate it's just going to link this email to the duplicate uh, document email document that exists in Worldocs. Similarly with attachments if the user will have an attachment that they need to save into multiple workspaces the user experience is identical so again I can select save attachments. Now one other functionality with EmailX when you save attachments you notice it shows me that this attachments were already saved into that workspace. So again we try to provide visibility for the users to identify you know, what they've done. If they saved an attachment, we wanted them to see, okay, that attachments were already saved. And it might be that if users receive an email with multiple attachments, they can basically, um, if they need to save them into different uh, matters, they can actually just do it in separate steps and they can see which ones they've saved. But uh, yeah, in this instance, basically, if I need to save, I'll save these two. And I'll just put them into this workspace, choose save. So again, just comes with this confirmation window. Now, one thing that we do behind the scenes when attachments are saved, um, and let's assume then I also need to file the email, I'll just file this email as well into one of the workspaces. So one thing would be when this email is filed and the attachments were saved, behind the scenes actually we relay them in Worldocs. So if I go to that email in Worldocs, if you look at the relations, you notice basically those, and I had three attachments from the out of the four which I said, so you notice basically this automatically related in Worldocs. So we try to connect information to help users sort of understand identify you know what um, attachments were saved separately from the emails without them having to go to Worldocs and create those relationships manually. Now there was a module which we call a content manager which I mentioned that is basically used to create email templates. So one functionality of the if I'm sending this email and I need to actually use one of my templates I can just simply go and if it's an account email, it's a payment advice, I can basically from here just go and choose what kind of email I'm sending, uh, press OK. So you can embed some prompts to help users populate the, the variable information in the email. So if I put an invoice number here, the amount, a transaction number, now I can also from here before I click OK, I can preview and I can see where that information appears in the email. So you notice in here, if I go to that field, it highlights in the email where that field is. And if I need to change that to 550 and I can move to the next one, that's where the transaction is. Also you notice this will show me that an attachment will be added as part of it. Okay. Looks like the, the attachment no longer exists there. But this is basically what I've done is I've basically constructed this email. I have this payment advice as pre-populated as a subject and this is the information I typed in. I'm ready to send this email. Uh, if I attach a couple of documents, okay. I just want to show you the printing of attachments. So my outlook is not it's playing up. I'll just move to the next one. So I'll just send this. I'll choose to print it. Press OK. So one thing is so basically I send that email and I print it. If I go to my sent items, again you'll notice basically this email. Now you notice how it has two categories. So basically it has the printed category in the file to all those category and the same thing with this one basically for printed if you configure it it will actually add a different category color and you can set the desired color for each of those categories but I can visually identify 
which emails basically I filed, which emails I printed. And the same thing if it's a, an email from my inbox and I need to print that email, um, I can just simply go. You can integrate with the Outlook shortcut. So I just press here Control P. Uh, you can configure email X to show the print manager window instead of the standard Outlook print window. And again, you notice from here I can choose just to print the attachment and not print the email. And if I have an attachment that has track changes, I can select to print the track changes from here, press OK. And again, you notice this actually has the, the printed category um, automatically applied to it. And also, the email itself was auto file, so I have this file to World Docs category also automatically added. Now, if I need to clean up my mailbox from those filed emails, again, very easily I can select this purge file. Uh, select purge. And you notice here basically it just shows me all the emails which I have filed into Waldocs and I have them in my inbox or sent item. So from here I can simply just go and select a subset of the email. So if I say I just need to clean up all those emails from my sent items that I filed. Um, I can sort them by the workspace where I filed those emails so, or I can sort them by the folder or by date and time. So I can actually just filter my, uh, my selection and just once I've selected what I would like to purge, just simply press OK and this will now clean my mailbox. So if I now go to my sent items, you will notice basically all those emails that were filed, they are now removed from my mailbox. So that's a quick overview of what the user experience that EmailX delivers. Um, a couple of simple things that we added, which have sort of standard Outlook sort of options that people ask for. We have this simple option here to reply with attachments. So again, quite often if the users actually have um, attachments, receive emails with attachments and they want to reply and preserve the attachments, they have this simple reply with attachment button that will open the email and preserve the attachment. Um, the other thing that uh, it's sort of a re recent addition to email X is basically when you actually have an email that has multiple attachments, again, we had a request to actually enable users to open all attachments with one click. So email X actually, you can configure to add this open all attachments that basically when I click on it, it will just simply open all those attachments at the same time. Um, these are, again, some productivity sort of options that EmailX delivers to eliminate the need for users that if they have multiple documents that they need to review and open, instead of open them individually, they can just simply click a button and automatically it would open all of them. The same in here, if I actually have, if I need to respond to this email, I read, I read it and I need to respond and preserve the attachments. Again, as a user, I have the option to choose to reply with attachments from here. So EmailX is not, just about providing some tools that actually people cannot do not have in Outlook, but also to actually make some of the the Outlook experience more streamlined by actually just simply uh, improving what they can normally do in Outlook, but normally they actually have to go through separate steps when going through those uh, processes. Uh, so that's. Um, my presentation for today. Now, Helen, I'll just pass over to you. If we, do we have any questions or um, if there are any specific uh, scenarios that our attendees would like to me to show them? Well, this is Rebecca, and if I might uh, butt in here, um, every time I see your product, I'm always just so impressed by the uh, number of features and how well thought out they are. Uh, in terms of every little detail, being able to undo if you make a mistake and all of that. Um, when you rename an attachment, does it change the document description in WorldOx too, or is it just doing, being changed in, in your product, in the email? No, so the, the idea behind uh, renaming was that basically the documents, the, the, the way you name documents in WorldOx doesn't change. And Usually the process is if the users would actually need to rename a document that they want to send via email without changing the description in WorldDocs, normally they would have to 
put them somewhere else on the desktop, change the names on the desktop, uh, and attach them from uh, from there, uh, which then leaves lots of documents being scattered around people's desktops. So in this instance, basically, when I change the name, it just simply changes the name of these attachments in our. It leaves the original um, the original World Docs description intact. And uh, and as I said, as you mentioned before, you know the undo is quite handy because as users make changes to those, if they say, actually, I don't want to make that change, I can very easily go back and redo the same thing. So if you accidentally revert to something, you can, you can uh, just yeah. bring it back. I also like the idea that if you, if you attached as a World Docs link, and then you suddenly realize, oh, wait, I'm sending this outside of the firm, that you can change that on the fly, too. That's, that's one of my favorite features. Um, yes. So if users uh, have shared mailboxes, uh, can, they, can they still uh, file emails from shared mailboxes? Yeah, so it works exactly the same way. I'm, I don't have a shared mailbox here, uh, but as a user, basically, when, when I have a shared mailbox, I can just simply go and select it, and it just provides exactly the same functionality. Uh, users can see the checkboxes next to the emails from a shared mailbox that they are filed. So if, for example, there are um, uh, secretaries that file emails for partners, uh, when they do the filing uh, from the partner mailbox, the partners can see which emails have been filed on their behalf. Great. Um, and when you're saving an attachment, uh... Can you change the document type? Yes. So if I have attachments, so that again can be done very easily. So you notice basically when I, I file the emails, it just simply file them and populated the metadata. So you can actually automatically populate the username in this instance, the document types. You can predefine what the default document type should be. But when you actually, if I have an attachment, so I just select save attachments. So if I, I'll just save this image. So if I need to change the document type or any additional method, I can simply have this display profile checkbox, uh, click save. And you see in here, I can just simply go and say, I want to actually, so that's an exhibit. Uh, automatically populated the author and the types. So I can type comments and just simply press okay. So that now will be saved with that document type. So, and again, if I want to confirm that it's been saved with the correct document type, I can right click, select where it's saved. I can go to that image, open the properties from here. And you see now the document type shows exhibit. Or I can make another change from here if needed be. And we do have another question from one of our attendees. Yes. Uh, does this product work with our GX4 cloud product? No, unfortunately, it doesn't work with the, with the GX4 cloud. Um, my, the reason is that the Waldocs API, which we use for, um, for the integration with a GX4 professional, doesn't have all the functionality that, that is required. So probably when I say it doesn't work with the cloud, there are some components of it that doesn't work with the GX4 cloud. Uh, cloud is basically primarily the filing. But if users want to use InMailX attachment manager or the print manager or the scheduling, that will still work with the cloud. It's just that the filing itself, when the users won't be able to, to file directly into Waldocs using the cloud. There is a functionality that if someone uses the GX, uh, for cloud and they want to file, uh, there is a functionality to with MLX also to file into the user mailbox. And you know how Worldox actually allows you to create those quick profile folders. I can just simply go and yes. navigate and file from here. And this will basically okay. file that email into that folder. And you notice here this time it actually showed the normal Worldox. Correct. Prompt. So it can be used but not directly with uh, with um, the API that actually uh, we we um, implemented for uh, the integration with Waldocs. 
Right, but a lot of your other features, such as the attachment manager and the yes. um, the part with the email template, all of those other really great features, they can still use. Yes. All right. Um, I'm looking to see if we have any more questions. Hella? Um, I don't see any more uh, right now. Um, I guess um, if, you know, once we have the recording, if anybody has um, additional questions, they could contact you, correct? They could email you and, um, and you can, um, you know, give them, give them answers if, uh, yes, if they yes. need, need that. Yeah, of course. Yeah, well, just feel okay. feel free to reach out to us or feel free to reach out to Waldocs um, and we'll be happy to organize some individual presentations or demonstrations or answer any additional questions that uh, you may have. Okay, that sounds that sounds perfect. Um, so, uh, do you have anything else you would um, you would like to add, or are we? Do you think we are ready to wrap up for today? Uh, probably the only thing I would like to add is uh, thank you everyone for uh, making time today to join us. Uh, thank you Waldogs for uh, inviting us to present in Alex and I hope that everyone will actually keep well and uh, keep safe and uh, we hope to see you guys in person sometime soon. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Florin. Uh, thank you for doing the webinar. Um, and as mentioned, we are going to uh, post a recording of the webinar so that anyone who was not able to jo uh, join us, they can still watch it. And to everyone who did join us, thank you for being here. And also, um, I don't know if you know, Ilta On is having their virtual conference next week. So if you are attending, um, stop by the solution center that they've set up and uh, both Waldocs and InMelex will be there and um, even if it's virtual we can still talk to you there. <laughs> um, so uh, we hope you'll join us again uh, soon for another presentation in our technology webinar series and uh, we hope you have a good weekend. Thank you Helen.